What's going on everyone? This is Sarge. We're going to be looking at perfecting your drag shot in Battlefield 4. This is a technique that's essential to a lot of aggressive recons in the game to get the advantage over your enemy, especially in a game like this where it requires you to be faster and more precise over your enemy. Kind of like the first come first serve kind of deal if the enemy, whoever has the drop shot on you first, tends to win the gunfight. And so you want to be able to counter your enemy especially when they're firing right back at you with speed and accuracy and this tactic is one of those things that allows you to do that. And so uh, what I'm showing you guys here is some of my settings in the game and what I also run as far as DPI settings. This is something that uh, can be very custom to what you like to play in your playstyle. Uh, there are some gamers who like to have high DPI settings. I personally like to have them lower as it gives me a better control over my aim when I'm aiming down sight and acquiring my targets and being able to pull off the drag shot, it sort of assists that with a lower sensitivity. So you can play with the settings that you have, but what I usually run is my mouse settings is, um, currently I'm playing at 1600 DPI as far as my mouse settings go. And then in game I run about 20, 21%. And that's, um, I, in my opinion, is a little low, lower than uh, what uh, most people like to run with. And um, that's just to help me with those drag shots, but I can still uh, move around and, and be precise when I'm not scoped in as well. So I have sort of a large mouse pad to be able to allow me to do that. Um, but you can test that for yourself. Uh, field of view is also another key thing in, in adjusting your resolution. Your screen resolution is something else. Um, I know a lot of PC players, especially myself, from previous titles like to increase their FOV as high as they can go. So in Battlefield 4 you can go up to 120 FOV and that sort of gives you like this warped very large scaled view that seems like makes it look like you're running into time speed. Uh, which is great. I mean, it, it makes the overall gameplay and feeling of the game a lot faster. But for me personally, when I'm playing the game, it makes it a little difficult to require targets because all your targets start to shrink a little and um, they become really small in the game of Battlefield 4. And it wasn't really the case, especially in Bad Company 2. It wasn't such a big issue. I think Battlefield 3, I was running around like 95 FOV. But in this game, I'm running 105. And that sort of balances out between the resolution that I'm currently running and the FOV, uh, plus the DPI settings it sends to work for me. And that's just my settings. You want to find one that's comfortable for you. You can play around with this. When you're playing the game, you can test this out. And so in the test range, what we want to do is find first what kind of weapon we want to use. I'd recommend the M40A5 only because it has a very high rate of fire and a large clip compared to the Scout Elite, which where you're going to have to reload as much. You're going to be obviously testing out your weapon and getting used to the drag shot. So you want to be able to pull off more shots so you can uh, consistently test out the uh, drag shot technique. And so what you want to do is start off with a close range scope. I usually would um, recommend uh, one anyone with a dot sight on it as it will allow you to be able to acquire and pinpoint your accuracy while you're trying to get your shots off. And basically what you do is once you have a close range scope on your uh, bolt action is you want to be able to have the target in your scope and then just slowly little by little uh, practice moving your mouse from side to side and figure out what's more comfortable if you are able to shoot from the right or shoot to, from the left. If you notice my sort of comfort zone is being able to drag shot to the right which in most cases if I find myself scoping in um, I tend to scope in sometimes towards the left that way I can drag shot and and hit my target more than likely to the right side. But it doesn't really matter. You can practice both right and left, but my comfort zone is right just to sort of practice the scope getting down. But you wanna have the target inside of the scope and then you get comfortable with doing that. And once you're comfortable with getting your targets, and pinpointing your uh, shots from inside, you wanna start working outside of the scope. And so as you see me here doing that, I have my target outside of the range of my scope. And then now it's sort of, a, it's a longer drag shot and then just getting used to that movement. And a lot of it, it's just really fine tuning the accuracy between the gap of your crosshair and then the target. And that comes with practice, obviously. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. And so once you get comfortable with, like I was mentioning, inside of the target, then you want to start working outside of the range between uh, your crosshair and target and then um, once that is completed then you start moving into higher scopes. One thing I'd like to mention is that moving while you're shooting does have a small effect on the game depending on the direction you're heading towards. So if I'm moving left it's usually a pixel or two to the left um, but it's not noticeable when you're in closer ranges. 
um, you only start noticing it where at farther distances and then um, the one thing also to take in consideration is the fact that if you're scoping in and uh, unscoped uh, with a pull bolt too fast you will throw your bullets off and that uh, tends to be a bug according to the community in the game um, if you just wait just a second or if you stay scoped in you won't have that issue so uh, but as far as movement goes it doesn't really affect your shot as you see me lining up my shots there they're pretty much hitting right on the target as I'm moving straight from the right or left and then you'll notice as I scoped in that you're going to be moving slower and so that's something that you want to take into consideration when you're playing the game, you don't want to be scoped in too much. If you plan on moving faster, you want to unscope to move around and then scope in to get your shot off. But keeping in mind at the same time that if you unscope and scope in too fast, your shot after about the third shot will um, shoot off its target. And you can see here using the moving targets don't actually work in the test range. I'm not exactly sure why, but that was sort of the uh, way to practice on moving targets. It just doesn't work in this game and so uh, I would stick with the stationary ones for now that's just to really perfect your overall technique and then you can try the moving targets um, in the game and so the next step would be to use the medium range scope and that's to start fine-tuning your shots with a a higher magnification of a scope and you do the same thing just start within your scope and practice drag shots within the scope and then once you start getting comfortable doing that you can start using the farther targets to get a more or to practice on a more precision shot and then once you're comfortable with that you're going to move again to the out of scope range and that's again your target uh, on the outer skirts of your scope and it's a longer drag shot and you will try to start fine-tuning that with a higher magnification. Also one thing to point out is the type of scope you use including the magnification that the scope has will also change the filling of your drag shot between your accuracy and pinpointing where your target's at. And that is something that you're going to adjust to uh, little by little between every scope. There's going to be a different type of way you drag shot your uh, targets. And uh, that will also come with experience as you play around with different scopes. You'll find ones that are more ideal to how you use your drag shot. And once that's taken care of, the next big movement is to move on to the larger range scopes. The six, seven, or eight times is ideal. 20, 40 would be more or less if you're playing a defensive role. And um, you could still pull off the same technique, but for practice's sake, uh, keep the six, seven, or eight within your uh, range of scopes to use for practice. The premise is still going to be the same. You want to stay within your scope at first to work on your drag shots. And you see now I'm, I've switched to a more up and uh, down vertical motion um, as opposed to right and left to start working on the comfort zone with moving up your scope rather than side to side. And that's just another technique to start practicing is vertical as well. And that's just essentially to empower your effectiveness with all the different types of ways to dry scope because it's a, such a dynamic technique. You wanna be able to have it down using uh, as much different angles as you can get it at. And that's to just get you comfortable with doing both vertical and horizontal. The last thing to keep in mind is that there are certain things that will affect your drag shots, such as the muzzle velocity between each bolt that you use. Uh, all the bolt actions have a different type of muzzle velocity. The ones that have a higher one will connect with your target a lot quicker than others. And so you will have to adjust the way you drag shot depending on the type of uh, weapon that you use. Straight pull, which is an uh, attachment that you can get for your bolt actions, allow you to shoot faster, will also affect your drag shots knowing that there's an issue with a game where as if you scope in and scope out, um, it will throw your third shot off. And so that's something to take into consideration. You may have to wait just a, a second before you can actually pull that shot off to make it more accurate. And so uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Your movement will also affect uh, the way your shots uh, happen. Make sure that if you're moving to the left or right, it'll be a pixel or two to the left or right. And depending on how far they are, your targets will be, um, will determine that. Also bullet spread is another factor when it comes to drag shots. Each bolt action has different variants between the spread it gives you with your bullets while you're moving or on the go and so weapons such as the Scout Elite SV98 and the 338 Recon are probably the more ideal ones if you're playing an aggressive recon up front to get you a more precise drag shot uh, whereas the other weapons um, are primarily more an offensive role and so again you're not really limited to that but keep that in mind that when you're using certain bolt actions they will actually have uh, a slight spread between each bullet 
that may affect your drag shots in the long run. And then the last thing that will affect your drag shots is the suppression in Battlefield 4, which is different than how it was in Battlefield 3. In Battlefield 3, when you were being suppressed, it would throw your accuracy off, but in uh, Battlefield 4, they made it so that your scope will sway a little, which is a lot better. Um, in this case, you're just going to have to determine which direction you're going to drag shot because other weapons will have a more suppressive effect than the um, other weapons. It just depends on what the enemy's using against you. Light machine guns and other bolt actions will have a more suppression effect than the other weapons that are available. So keep that in mind. That's just to determine where you're going to have to shoot sometimes. And then hold your breath. Don't forget that that's also a very key thing in the overall determining of your precision shots when it comes to drag shots. And then practice, practice, practice. Remember that's key. So hopefully you guys can use this information to better your overall game in Battlefield 4. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more Battlefield videos on my channel and also training when it comes to the recon class. And I will catch you guys in the next video. My name is Sergeant Enigma. I'm out. Take care.